This conference will now be recorded. Hi everyone, my name is Melinda Bourgeois. I'm owner of Travel Central here in New Orleans, Louisiana. Welcome to our presentation on Italy, Croatia, and the Greek Isles with Oceana Cruise Line. For those who have never sailed the Med, you're in for a real treat. It is one of the most beautiful places in the world. The food is outstanding. The history is amazing. And if you decide to do it by cruise, it is one of the simplest vacations you'll ever take. Joining me today is Loretta Eccles of Oceana Cruise Lines. Loretta, if you want to go ahead and go to the next page. Just a little bit about Travel Central before we get started. We've been in business since 1988. We're a member of a signature travel network. We have um, over 20 advisors who are highly trained, knowledgeable travel experts who have one objective, to create, design, and implement a travel experience for you that will meet your every expectation. So now what I'm gonna do is turn it over to Loretta who will take us on a journey through the Med in uh, more about Oceana Cruises. We hope you enjoyed today's presentation. We do have a chat feature. If you'd like to ask any questions, we'll answer them all at the end. Thank you for joining us today. And Loretta, I'm gonna pass it on to you. Thank you so much, Melinda. I'm so glad to be here today. I am just want to say thank you so much, Melinda, for giving us the opportunity to be and to, to be with you this afternoon and to talk to all your lovely clients this evening. My name is Loretta Eccles. I am the Director of Sales for Oceana Cruises here in the Southeast. I've been with the cruise line for many years, and I know this last year has been quite an interesting one for all of us, and we all want to go somewhere. So I know one of the things we're all thinking about as we're sitting at home these days is where do I want to go? Where have I not been? What am I looking forward to doing? And that's one of the things that we've kind of been focused on here at Oceana Cruises. We've been thinking about, you know, remember the future. Just think about all the places that you went to and that you loved and that you fell in love with, maybe Alaska or Portofino or even the Taj Mahal that you see here. And then start thinking about the places that you want to go to next, because we know there is a huge, you know, a, an extraordinary world out there and so many different places for all of us to go and see and visit. So with Oceana, we are very fortunate because we do have, okay, one second. Melinda, did we lose the screen? No, I think you went off of your PowerPoint. If you want to click back on the PowerPoint. Sorry, everybody, a little technical challenge, but we'll get back on board in just a minute. Okay, uh, let's see. Actually, there we go. Okay, so I'm not sure what happened there. Sorry about that. Okay, we'll go back to share. All right, so one thing with Oceana Cruises, the great thing about us is we are small ship luxury. We do go um, all over the world. So that's why when Melinda and I was talking to try to come up with some great opportunities for us to think about and talk about today, we kind of focused on Europe and the Med because we do have so many different options of different itineraries that you can go and visit when you're in the Mediterranean. And one of the other things about Oceana, and we'll talk about all this later, but we're going to talk about, of course, our ships and our cuisine, but we're going to start off with those incredible travel experiences. So moving forward, for some reason, Melinda, it is not wanting me to advance. Let's see, there we go. Okay, so moving into the itinerary, and I know Melinda's mentioned this many times to all of you, uh, they do a lot of groups, they have a lot of opportunities for you to go and to travel and to kind of experience things together, or maybe this is just a great itinerary that you've been looking forward to doing, and we have some incredible uh, ports of call on this itinerary, it's Rome to Athens, it's 10 days, October the 6th, or 2022, it's going to start out in Rome, and it's going to end in Athens, so you're going to start out in two very, you're going to start and end in two very historical, ancient, magnificent <laughs> cities, 
So going into moving forward, oops, sorry for some people, this is not, one, there we go. So this will show you the itinerary. So it starts out in Rome. Okay. I did not touch anything, Melinda. I'm not sure what keeps happening. I'm not Let's sure. See. It, um, it might be. I, I haven't even touched. I didn't even touch the keyboards. So okay, this I, I, is strange. We apologize for the technical difficulty. We are going to get back on in just a moment. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's uh, jumping out on it now. What I'm going to do is. Um, I'm going to ask you, uh, well, go ahead and keep going and we'll go from here. We'll yeah, well, and let me, i tell you one other thing. Okay, here we go. So here is the itinerary. So it's going to start off on October the 6th in Rome. And it's, you'll notice that when you look at Oceana Cruises, you're going to notice a couple of things about our itineraries. We are very port intensive. So if you take a 10 day cruise, you're going to be in port basically almost every day. So you're gonna have one sea day on this voyage and the other days you're going to be in some great port of call that you can really enjoy and kind of immerse yourself in. The other thing that you'll notice with Oceana when you're looking through our different itineraries is we do overnights, which is kind of unusual because not all cruise lines will really actually, they, they usually like to stay there during the day and then in the early evening, they usually leave the port of call and then go somewhere, you know, they're kind of at sea at night and then the next day you wake up in a new port. Well, with Oceana, we like to make sure that you have time to truly enjoy the ports of call. So you're going to see those 7 p.m. departures, the 8 p.m. departures. And then if you notice, kind of right in the middle is Venice. You actually are there overnight. So the great thing about being in Venice overnight is not only can you go and see things during the day on the first day, but then you can also really go in in the evenings. And, you know, it's kind of amazing when you go into a port of call during the day and you know, everybody's out and about and it's the hustle and the bustle and then everybody kind of goes home at five. And then if you're there in the evening, you truly get a different feel for the for the city and what it offers because you're going to be able to go into port, maybe have dinner or maybe do something that you wanted to do. That's in maybe the ballet or the opera, or something that's going on that evening as opposed to just doing daytime activities. And then what's you're going to be able to be there overnight. The next day, you're going to be there all day until 5 p.m. So you truly have a day and a half in the port of call so you can see everything there is to see while you're in Venice. And then, of course, as I mentioned earlier, there's that sea day. So after two very uh, busy days in Venice where you've been touring and really enjoying yourself, you're going to have a day where you can cruise the Adriatic and really kind of relax and enjoy the ship and kind of get rejuvenated before you go into Catacalon, which is your next port, which is Greece. And then you have a couple of days there in different ports, and then you're gonna end in Athens. So moving into the next port, just one second, we're froze again, let's see. There we go. So starting off in Rome, Italy, you're going to be your first port of call. And the main thing is you're going to fly into Rome. You're going to fly into the airport there. And I really hope that you actually come in a day early so you can truly see some of the mag magnificent um, tourist, I mean, attractions that there is actually in Rome. So when you're actually visiting the city, we actually go out of Cittavita Vecchia, which is a little bit out of the city. It's the cruise port. It's a pretty major cruise port. You can see here several ships goes in and out, different cruise lines. But when you're in the small city, even though it's kind of outside of Rome, there are great things for you to see and do. Maybe if you get to the ship a little bit early, you want to be able to walk around and kind of enjoy the local area. So there is actually some good historical sites there to see as well. But while you're in Rome, so maybe you come in a couple of days or a day early and you really want to kind of see everything there is to see and do in Rome, of course, you've got Rome and then you've got Vatican City. So what do you do here? You know, you've got the Colosseum, which we all know has some huge historical, I mean, it's 
you know, everyone talks about going to the Colosseum when they're in Rome because it's that huge, beautiful amphitheater with the gladiators fought with the combats. And then they had, of course, the animal fights as well, which we all know in today's world, it's not something that we would ever want to see or participate in. And back in those days, though, it was it was truly something that kind of really, um, I guess you would say the Colosseum was kind of known for the different things that it had throughout the amphitheater. And then you've got the Roman Forum, which was this, it was kind of like the day-to-day -day life of Rome. It was truly the center of Rome. So this is where their government buildings was. It was where things that they would go for day-to-day -day business, like we would go to the city center where we live today. So it's truly two very historical parts of Rome to kind of make sure that you don't miss when you're visiting. And then you've got the Parthenon, which in the former days, it was a Roman temple, but in today's day, it's actually a Catholic church. But you can kind of see from the picture, it's kind of uh, a little bit of an odd shape. So it's very different, very unique, very ancient. And of course, it's truly magnificent when you go on the inside of this building. I've actually been to Rome many times and I've every time I go to Rome, I always make sure that I go and kind of walk through and see all these great attractions even though I've been there before and then of course you have the famous Trevi Fountain and I have to say this is one of the most I guess you would say to me it's almost magical because when you go to Trevi Fountain of course it has the history it's the oldest water source in Rome it dates all the way back to the Roman times um, it actually supplied the Roman baths and the fountains in the area so there's a lot of history with the Trevi Fountains but it's known for the coin toss so when you go to Trevi Fountains, you always want to make sure you have some coins so that you can kind of throw the coin into the waterfalls and of course make your wish. But they say that if you come and you throw one coin, that it means you'll, you will definitely return to Rome. But they say if you, you toss two coins, it means you'll return and fall in love. And they say if you toss three coins, you'll return, you're gonna find love and you're going to marry. So um, I have to say, I, I think I've tossed anything from one to five and uh, I never got married <laughs> in regard, I never found love in Rome and I never married in love, um, I should say married and fell in love and married in Rome, but actually I did have a lot of great wishes that came through through the years when I would go by and toss the coin and of course make the wish. So that is a famous site that you definitely would want to see. So everything is kind of laid out very easy in Rome for you to be able to get around and see and do. But then of course, if you, you can't go to Rome without visiting the famous Vatican City. So you've got St. Peter's Basilica, of course, and then Michelangelo Sistine Chapel. So those are two sites that definitely you would never want to miss. You want to make sure that you allow time to go and to visit both of these in incredible places. So these are kind of just some things in Rome. I just wanted to kind of bring and kind of talk to you today just to kind of let you know there's incredible, um, you know, before you get on board the ship, there's so many things that you can do in some of these incredible cities to be able to visit. And then of course, once you get on, we're gonna take you to a whole different, uh, kind of immerse yourself in different cities as well. Now, this is something that we as Oceana, that we do, that's kind of a little bit different if you are in Rome. And when you're cruising with us, uh, you're going to find that we do offer some pretty unique types of shore adventure type explore, exploration or even culinary focused. So with Oceana in the Roman areas and depending on what, which cruise you're on, we do something called go local tours. So this one actually is a black truffle discovery. So what you can do when you're cruising with us on some of our different itineraries that's throughout the Mediterranean is we would offer this um, where you go out with a local, um, basically he's a truffle hunter and he has dogs that actually go out and hunts these truffles. And the great thing, these dogs are trained to literally go out into the woods. And I've actually done this tour and it's pretty incredible because when you go out and they're just sniff, sniff, sniffing and they kind of sniff at the base of trees. And then all of a sudden they'll, they, they find what they're looking for. And then of course, 
the guide or well, not the guide, but the the hunter will go over and they'll dig up and they'll pull up these little bitty rough looking and they almost look like really rough potatoes. And then you take them, you clean them up and then you go back. And when you go back, you, we would take you back to a local restaurant that we work with and they would actually take those truffles that you just found out in the woods with this incredible, um, I guess you would say guide dog. And the main thing is this, this actual particular dog, the brown one that it shows in the middle, his name is Your Majesty. So he's actually one of the best and of the best, so to speak. But when you get back to the restaurant, they'll take the, the truffles that you found while you were out hunting and they actually prepare an incredible pasta uh, with the truffles and the truffle oil. And then of course it's served with some beautiful Italian wines. So it truly is a very unique experience and it would be something that you would always remember when you're visiting Italy or actually when you're in Rome and outside of Rome. So going into Another part of this incredible itinerary is the Amalfi Coast. So when you're cruising, you're going to notice that you're gonna be cruising in all these beautiful, very picturesque type ports of call. And the Amalfi Coast is an incredible part of the world where you definitely want to visit. And you can see from the picture here, and it truly is very, you see the little villages that kind of hang, hang to the cliffside when you're sailing in and there's great local shopping and great things to see and do and also wonderful restaurants that are going to be out on the coastline where you can go and sit and enjoy this incredible view while you're having an incredible Italian meal, that great pastas, and just kind of sit back and relax. So the Amalfi Coast, another great port of call on that fabulous itinerary that we were talking about earlier. And then of course we go into Dubrovnik. Now Croatia is very unique with the way it is actually designed. So when you look at the country of Croatia, you're going to see it kind of goes inland and then it comes back out and around and it goes down the coastline. So we actually call on three different ports in Croatia, Zadar, Split, and Dubrovnik. And on this particular itinerary, you're going to go into Dubrovnik. And it's kind of at the more Southern, I guess you would say Southern point. But when you go into Dubrovnik, it is a beautiful place. And the great thing about Dubrovnik, it is an old town. So there's the old town and the new town, but the old town really sits right in the harbor. And this is a beautiful shot, an aerial view where you can see it is a walled city. So you have this incredible wall that goes all the way around this, this great old town. And when you go in, it's the cobblestone streets and where you can walk and you truly feel like you've taken a step back in time. And one of the other things that you'll see when you're in Dubrovnik, as I mentioned here, you can see the old streets that you have, but there's a lot of, it's a very medieval type walled city. Um, it has a lot, a lot of Venetian type monuments. You've got the monastery, rector's palace, you've got the cathedral there. But also if any of you were big fans of the Game of Thrones, I know many of you may remember that show that was on HBO, but with the Game of Thrones, you can also actually take a tour here and see what was created to be King's Landing. So it truly is kind of another place where you can go back and kind of see a little bit of, of what, I guess you would say, uh, the modern theater world kind of put to life on the big screen with the television where the show that lasted forever. So that's something that's just kind of a little uh, helpful hint about King's Landing. But you can walk the walls if you really want to go and enjoy the city. You can actually see the inside and the outside with the beautiful water on one side and then of course the old town on the inside. And it's great lunch venues when you're walking the, the wall because there's beautiful picturesque type a restaurant sitting up on the sides of the wall where you can sit and relax and maybe have lunch or have a drink or a cup of coffee late in the day. And then if you really want to kind of see the city and also a little go a little bit more inland or maybe go out and do something from the harbor, there are of course cruises. You can do the Riviera Cruises, which is actually out 
kind of circles the wall. The cable car will take you up to the top so you can actually look down on the old town. Or maybe you just want to kind of tootle around town and see some of the old town highlights where you don't, you know, just need to sit back and relax, not be walking. You just kind of enjoy it from uh, have someone else take you around and show you the highlights. Now, if you're very active and you're looking for something a little bit more uh, to really get out and see Croatia and see some of the outlying areas of Dubrovnik, you can also go kayaking. We also, uh, you can go cycling if you wanna kind of go out and really enjoy some of the countryside. Now, one thing that's unique to us once again is this is one of our wellness tours. So if you really want to kind of focus on something where you can truly relax while you're in Dubrovnik, maybe you've done, uh, been there before, maybe you're looking for something new, but we actually have something called a wellness tour and it's yoga at Lock Lockrum Island and Old Town. So the great thing is you take just a, it's a very scenic short boat ride that's gonna bring you over to Lockrum Island. And it was kind of, it was founded by a Benedictine monks and it was it kind of populated back in, I believe it was around the 11th century. But the great thing is this island is covered in 100 year old olive trees. So you can go and actually do yoga in the an olive grove, kind of sitting back and relaxing. And then of course you've got the monastery there as well. So it's very relaxing all the way around. And I know in today's world, I think we could all use a little bit of peace and kind of relaxation. So it gives you something a little bit different. And maybe if you are not really into taking the tours and doing other things, you can actually come and enjoy something and just kind of relax. No, I'm trying to so go into um Venice, Italy. We'll talk a little bit about Venice here. Now, Venice, we all know, is an incredible city, and you'll see a gorgeous picture here. This is, of course, the Rialto Bridge, which is famous. It's the bridge that connects the two sides, and it goes across the Grand Canal. It's got shops all across it, and there's restaurants on each side, and of course, you've got the gondola rides there as well. But this will give you a great aerial shot of when you're looking at Venice, because a lot of times people will say, I really just want to get a great feel for the city and how it's really laid out. So this will show you when you come in, you can see the cruise terminal is going to be on the left hand side of your screen. And of course, the train stations up at the top where that comes in and out. But you can see where it kind of winds through the Grand Canal and you'll see where the Rialto Bridge is located. And of course, St. Mark Square. So it really when you really look at it, it's um, it's very impressive to see the city that's been built and the way it has the Grand Canal that goes straight through and then all these beautiful picturesque areas around it. So the main thing, of course, everyone wants to go into St. Mark's Square, which is located right in, of course, um, the downtown, I shouldn't say downtown, but it's kind of like the grand entrance when you're coming in to Venice. It's where everybody sees first, wants to see, and you kind of go from that point. So this kind of shows you where it's of course St. Mark's Square, beautiful area here. But when you in St. Mark's Square, there's so many different little areas and streets and alleyways that you can just kind of go off on your own and kind of go in and kind of wind your way around to see other parts of Venice. And that's kind of where I always start. I would always start in St. Mark's Square and then you kind of find the little hustle and bustle streets and you'll kind of get to know where the people are walking in which directions. And you'll have little signs that'll say Rialto Bridge or little signs that'll say different things are this way and that way or Doge's Palace or St. Mark's you know, Basilica. It kind of takes you around. And then so it gives you where you can kind of go off the beaten path and be able to see other parts of Venice. And then the next thing you know, you may actually find yourself in like a little local neighborhood. So you're kind of away from all the more popular areas where everybody's kind of seeing all the main attractions. But if you have been to Venice before and you're looking for something maybe else to do, always think about visiting Verano 
or even going over to Murano, which is where the glass factories are. Those are two great things to see and do as well when you're in Venice. Maybe if you've been to and seen most of the local sites of Venice the last time maybe you were here. But as I mentioned, you've got the Basilica, you've got Doge's Palace, the Bridge of Size. So there's a lot of history for you here to see. And I know a lot of times people would say with the Doge's Palace, it's very kind of like that Venetian Gothic style. It's a main landmark. It's truly kind of the one of the main, um, I guess you would say, kind of like the center of the, all the areas people want to really see when they're going. And it was, of course, the former doge's residence um, that was the seat of the venetian government so it does have a lot of history and then of course the bridge of size is actually connected so it's kind of the old saying where they would say with the bridge of uh, size is those who crossed were likely to be incarcerated for a very long time and the connection between the bridge was actually built to connect the old prison which was in Doge's Palace and the new prison, which is across the river. So there was a lot of history here. So when you're walking across the bridge, you can kind of see there's very small areas where you can look out, but you can kind of look out and they said people were kind of looking out for the last time to kind of see the beautiful water in Venice before they were incarcerated. So there's a lot of history with that with that area where you can go in and see the Basilica, Doge's Palace, and the Bridge of Sighs, and it's all very close together. So it's very easy to see. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, the Rialto Bridge, which is famous, um, it's a stone archway bridge over the Grand Canal. It is the oldest bridge in Venice. It's still in use today. It's great shopping for everyone. And it truly is a must-see. And you can find anything on the bridge as far as shopping goes or on each side kind of leading up or after you've crossed over. There's all different types of incredible, um, I guess you would say, maybe if you're looking for something special, you can find. And of course, if you want to just sit back and relax and you don't want to do all the walking, you can take a gondola ride. They'll take you around through the canals and show you everything that there is to see without you really having to get out and kind of find your own way, they can show you and then maybe even serenade you as well. And this is something that when you're in, as I mentioned earlier, you're gonna be here for an overnight. So maybe this is something you and your significant other would really want to do in the evening is go back into Venice and truly enjoy um, going through the canals and maybe seeing it from a different perspective in the evening as opposed to during the day. So then, of course, as we have those two days in Venice, you're going to get to really enjoy the Adriatic where you're going to be able to just cruise as you're kind of relaxing and kind of having a great day at sea. And when you're on board the ship, you can sit back, relax. We're going to have all different types of activities for you on board if you want to be engaged. You can go to anything from a guest lecture. You can do afternoon tea in the afternoon up at Horizons. You can maybe go sit by the pool if you want to relax or maybe even walk, um, kind of maybe do a little workout if you're into fitness. Or maybe you just want to go up to the barista and have a cup of coffee, sit back and read a book in the library. So there's lots of different options for you on that sea day as well. The next we'll be going into Santorini. Now, Santorini is pretty incredible when you really think about what, where Santorini, I guess you would say how it was created. So with Santorini, it is truly one of the most beautiful islands I think I've ever been to in the Aegean. And it was created by a volcanic eruption in the 16th century. The great thing about this is when you really see there's two cities that actually survived, you've got Fira and Ia. And the main thing is when you look, this is what, when you go into Santorini, Greece, this is truly what you're going to see. You cruise into literally like the crater of the volcano, and you can see how the cliffs here really kind of hold on. And you've got the cities, You've got one on the left up kind of in the middle of, I would I always call it kind of a C. And on the bottom is where you have the other major city. 
But the beautiful thing about it is that is what creates this incredible landscaped island. So when you're kind of in, when you're in Santorini, of course we have to tender. Uh, we're not able to dock in Santorini. So every, you would be tendered from the ship over to the island. You can reach the top by cable car, by private car, or maybe if you're going to be doing a private tour or some tours, you'll see how the road goes up the side. And then of course the cable car comes from down at the base, straight up the side of the mountain. You'll also see how all the ships are just tendered off there in kind of waiting. So it's actually very picturesque when you're actually up at the top looking down and this will give you a great picture of what you will see. So these beautiful, very um, architecture here is amazing. You will see all of these beautiful different types of homes and buildings that are built on the side of the cliff. And it is absolutely gorgeous with the blue roofs and the white and they all just kind of sit stacked and there's a great walking kind of like a little cobblestone street where you can walk around and see everything and kind of look off and kind of just see what you're going to be uh, kind of look out over the ships and you can kind of see where the where the town was built and how it was built but one of the very historic things is when from the um when the eruption of the volcano happened it actually really kind of buried um, this town which was called Ekaterra. And a lot of it was completely preserved. And, and it actually has some incredible remains of, of frescoes and all different types of objects and artworks. And it was actually kind of excavated back in 1967. But you can see here where you can truly see where the city was when the volcano actually erupted. So it's a great thing to go and visit when you're on the island to be able to really get a feel for the history and how that island truly was created. And then we'll go on to Athens, which of course is famous for the Acropolis. And we actually go into the port of Piraeus, which is a very busy port as well. It's one of the bigger, larger ports in Greece, if not the largest, probably the largest. But you can kind of see here um, how the uh, magnificent Acropolis sets up on top of the hillside. And you can also see the Parthenon, um, the temples. You can kind of really get a look of everything and how it sits up on top of the hill, kind of overlooking the city of Athens, kind of stretches out where you can see everything. So truly the remains of the Acropolis and the Parthenon are pretty, um, very impressive and truly it's kind of when you're there, it's kind of in, you're in awe because you're going, oh my gosh, this has been here for so long and how it survived all the time. So when you go in, um, as I mentioned, you've got the Acropolis of Athens. And of course, you're also going to have a lot of other buildings and famous sites that are actually around the um, Acropolis. And just a little bit of history, the word Acropolis is from the Greek word Akron, which is the highest point in Polis, which is city. So that's where you get the Acropolis. Now, when you want to kind of walk around, and this is one of my favorite places and things to do, of course, you've got the Parliament building. But if you go to the Plaka area, it's a great place to really walk around and just kind of see the different things that really makes uh, Greece unique. But it has some of the incredible cuisine. If you're really into Greek salads or if you're into baklava or if there's different types of anything Greek that you really love, this is where you find it in the placa. You can go here, walk around, enjoy kind of a lazy afternoon if you want to and just sit and relax and just kind of walk and see and do and then maybe stop and have a little bit to eat and then walk a little bit more and then maybe stop for something to drink but it's a great way to spend your afternoon. Okay, so Union, which of course we all know is the Temple of Poseidon. It's about 43 miles south of Athens. It is one of the major monuments that a lot of people really want to see when they are in Athens because it's fairly close. So it truly is something else. If you've been to Athens before and you're looking for something new to do that you could do while you're in Athens. Now, just as a reminder, it's the cruise is October the 6th or the 16th. It's a 10 day. 
it's ROM to Athens. And with when you book with Travel Central, you're going to be able to get some very incredible group amenities, prepaid gratuities. That is a value depending on the category that you book, anything from $16 to $23 per person per day value, $100 shipboard credit per stateroom, free internet, and then of course, all the things that we at Oceana include when you cruise with us, and I'll go through those things fairly in just a few minutes. So Annette is 2022, October 6th of 2022. Now to kind of talk a little bit about Oceana, I know we talked a lot about the med and all the different ports of call in the med that we go to, but with Oceana Cruises, we truly do go all over the world. So if you're looking for something different, maybe you've been to the Mediterranean, maybe you're looking for a Baltic cruise, an Alaska cruise, maybe you're looking at going to um, just, maybe you wanted to go to South Africa or maybe something a little further to Asia we will be able to take you there. We have all different types of itineraries and that truly is something that we are known for. So as I mentioned earlier, we're, we're very much known for the travel experiences and the different parts of the world that we go to. And our voyages range anywhere from seven days to 180 days. Our 180 days are around the world cruises. And then of course, we go to all different ports all over the world and we visit over 100 different countries. So when you look at our brochure, uh, we always kind of have a saying, if it's on your bucket list, it's probably in our brochure. But we do everything from Alaska to North America, Central America, down to South America, Af and then over, of course, to Africa, Europe, all the way down to Australia, New Zealand, and of course, Asia. So when you are thinking about different types of, you know, if you're looking at, I should say, different itineraries and you, there's specific things that you want to do when you're cruising with us, then you can definitely always know, as I showed you earlier, we're going to be able to show you and take you to visit all those great different cities and, of course, be able to kind of really let you experience those cities through different types of excursions. So with the with all the different ports of call that we go to throughout the world, we offer over 3,000 different tours and excursions. Anything from culinary to go local to the wellness tours we talked about earlier to food and wine, and of course, those ex select and exclusive private type tours as well. So I know in today's world, a lot of times people are saying, okay, what size ship, you know, how many people do you carry? We are small ship luxury. So this will kind of show you how we measure up with other cruise lines. So we have the regatta class and the Oceana class. So when you cruise with Oceana, you're going to be cruising with hundreds, not thousands. So you're not gonna have the lines, the waiting, it's gonna be really easy to get off and on. But the other great thing about cruising with smaller ships is with Oceana, by having those smaller ships, we can take you into smaller ports of call. So with the regatta classes we talked about, um, just one of our, I guess you would say class of ships, we have four different ships in the regatta class, the regatta, nautica, insignia, and serena. So these ships carry less than 700 passengers. So we have a very high touch service, I guess, a staff ratio of 1.71 1 to 1, but beautiful, very, I guess the ships are, are light and bright, very calming, neutral colors, uh, more open, uh, very warm and inviting. Uh, we like to say that our ships are like your home away from home. We also have the Oceana class, which is Riviera and Marina. We have two ships a little bit larger, they carry less than 1,300 passengers. So still smaller, uh, more kind of like your home away from home type feel, very inviting. The main thing with the Oceana class, they are a little bit larger, but it's more space, more public space, more restaurants and more things to do. It's not so much a lot more passengers. So going into the ships on board, we do truly say that our ships has 
that incredible residential design. So all of our furnishings are very high in residential feel. They're not cookie cutter where you're not going to be seeing the same things and throughout the entire ship, each room has a very home away from home inviting type feel. A lot of our furnishings and a lot of our decor was designed by Ralph Lauren Home. And you can kind of see there's a lot of very unique touches like on the top right hand corner, you would see a in Terrace Cafe, there's a hand-blown Venetian glass chandelier. So we were going back to talking about Venice earlier. So you can see that actually came from Murano, which is the one of the glass factories there. So very home away from home, but very unique with what we have on board as far as making sure that you're very comfortable. Accommodations, these are just kind of three of our, I guess you would say most popular um, accommodations, anything from our veranda stateroom to the concierge, concierge level veranda up to our penthouses. You're gonna see anything with Oceana. Our smallest stateroom is about 150 square feet. Our largest is 2000 square feet. So we can accommodate whatever your needs are. If you want to really truly be able to take that penthouse suite with the butler service, with the walk-in closet, you can see with the sitting area and be very comfortable on your voyage. Or if you just want to have veranda stateroom, be able to go outside and sit on your veranda and have everything you need right there as well. So very spacious depending on what your personal needs are. But I, I truly say these are our most popular categories. And I mentioned earlier talking about the service. We truly do pride ourselves on making sure that you are taken care of. So we don't have intrusive type service. They're not hovering, but they are there to anticipate all of your needs. And then going into if you like to stay busy while you're on board or maybe you want to go sit by the pool, uh, we do have everything that you would find. Even though our ships are a little smaller, you're going to have everything you would need that you would find on the larger ships as well. And then, as I mentioned earlier, I was talking about going to Horizon. So if you're at sea and you truly love to have afternoon tea, and I'm one of those, I love to go in and see the city and come back and then sit, go up to Horizons in the afternoon. And I like to sit back, relax, have a cup of tea, have a couple of pastries. And it's pretty amazing because the high tea is normally around four o'clock. And then we go to happy hour at five o'clock and we have happy hour every day. So literally in the change of a tablecloth, they will change from the afternoon tea straight into happy hour. So you can go from a cup of tea to a glass of wine very quickly, which is pretty impressive. And then you can, of course, get ready and head on down to dinner. So we also have um, anything from classes, lectures, and activities on board. We have our Aquamar Spa on board. If you're really into fitness, we do have a lot of complimentary health and fitness classes on board as well. You're also going to find, as I mentioned earlier, we truly are known for the hallmark of our brand is our exquisitely crafted cuisine. So we are known in the industry as the leader. We are known as the foodie cruise line, so to speak. About 25% of our onboard staff is dedicated to the culinary experience. Jacques Papin is our executive culinary director. Uh, we always make sure that we source the finest ingredients so that everything is prepared a la minute, so it is prepared the way you like it, and it's always with the finest and the freshest ingredients as well. We even source our own lobsters off the coast of Maine from a father-son team. They've, so they've actually supplied our lobsters for many years now. And then if we also have plant-based cuisine if you want some more healthy options. We are open seating, so there is um, we have multiple open seating dining venues. There is no additional cost. Our specialty restaurants are included. And then also, we are country club casual, so no jacket, no tie is required. The jacket you can wear is at your preference if you're going to specialty restaurants or maybe you just want to get dressed up one evening. But we do not require jackets or tie in the evenings. 
And then we'll talk a little bit about some incredible value that we have to offer you here. So with Oceana, we always offer two for one cruise fares, and then we offer our Olac Choice package, that's our promotion. So the free round trip airfare, major gateways, and then of course we would give you a choice of one. You can choose shore excursions, beverage package, ship or credit. And starting with our 2022 seasons, uh, we have added free airport transfers when you take advantage of our O Life Choice round trip airfare. And we also always included, just think of this, and we were talking about the value earlier, we always include internet, we don't charge for those specialty restaurants, 24-hour uh, room services included, no delivery fees, fitness classes I mentioned, we include bottled water, still sparkling, soft drinks, specialty coffees, and laundrettes. So those things are always included with Oceana. Now for being uh, working with Travel Central, and I want when you're ready to make your plans to move forward with your cruise, uh, Travel Central is a part of the Signature Travel Network, and it's one of our preferred partners. So the great thing about when you travel and you book with Travel Central, on select departures, we would be able to offer you an additional value, which would be prepaid gratuities. And we were talking about that earlier. It's a value of anywhere from $16 per person per day to $23 per person per day, which can definitely increase some value when you start looking at 10, 12, 14 day or longer cruises. And for you joining us today is to say thank you for any, it doesn't matter which destination or if you book in, uh, you plan on joining the group, but I will offer you personally, I will give a $200 shipboard credit per couple for new bookings made in Brand and higher between today and February 24th. So that's a, uh, gives you a two-week window to make a decision and hopefully get something planned for 21 or 22. And then we also, as of tomorrow, are going to be announcing our President's Day sale, which is a, to a four-category upgrade. So lots of ways for you to combine and actually take advantage of some great promotions. And we always have our Book with Confidence guarantee so best price guarantee so if you book now we actually have something later the price point changes we'll always make sure that you're protected either with maybe an upgrade or we'll work on the difference depending on uh, what the voyage is and what category you're in and then as we all know in today's world we all are following a lot of new health and safety protocols we do have a full list of all of our health and safety protocols on our website. So if you just go to oceanacruises.com slash health, it will tell you everything that we are doing moving forward and we will be changing and making sure that we always not only meet, but we exceed those expectations when we are back to cruising again. So with that, I just wanna say thank you and make sure that when you're ready to plan, just work with your travel advisor and at Travel Central, they will be able to take care of all of your needs. And I know there is, they have several new upcoming virtual travel experiences. This is some more that you can kind of put on your calendar to remember everything from Japan to river cruises to Finland, Norway, Iceland, and Antarctica. I actually went to Antarctica a couple of years ago. It was an incredible experience. I would go back. It was truly breathtaking. And then as on behalf of myself with Oceana Cruises and Travel Central, just thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. And I hope you actually enjoyed. And maybe, I always say maybe gained a little bit of knowledge on something or maybe gave you a little bit something to look forward to. And as I started with, always remember the future. Loretta, thank you. This is Melinda again from Travel Central. Fabulous uh, presentation. Looking forward to going back to the Med. You made it so exciting and so much fun. So um, I do appreciate your time. Do, uh, if we have any questions, there was one question about Malta, and that was an oversight, and I apologize for that. Um, Oceana doesn't actually do Malta, but we do have some information that I'll, we'll be happy to share with you. Um, and then if you have any other questions, please put them in the chat box. As she said earlier, we are a team of travel advisors, and this year is going to be an interesting year. We've been in the business for 33 years, and we've learned more to this year um, of changes and flexibility and, and things like that. So definitely give us a call 
Um, what is it, one of the questions is, what is the most popular food to eat in Greece? Um, does anyone, I mean, would you have a recommendation on that, uh, Loretta? What's the most popular food? Oh my gosh, I, I live, I think when I was in Greece, I literally lived off of Greek salads because it was like, something I don't know I just couldn't get enough of it but I'm just trying I mean there is so many different incredible things and I just went completely blank when I said that but Greek salad was something I just remember everywhere I went it's like I constantly wanted the Greek salad and ironically it's very different than what we call a Greek salad here so I would definitely encourage you to try it when you're there Fantastic. Okay, well, just so everyone knows, we did record the presentation. Tomorrow we'll be sending a recording to everyone who joined us today, as well as everyone who signed up for it and was unable to make it. We hope you, again, as Loretta said, hope you enjoyed it. And um, if you need any help, Travel Central is here to help you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye now, Loretta. Bye-bye.